it is reflective of the deep divisions that exist in terms of nationality and in terms of religion. For some people they have the idea that you're very much one identity or another and maybe flags are very important to them as symbols of that. We obsess over flags because the things we should be obsessing over are a good deal more complicated. Flags sometimes are used as, as weapons against people of another community. We need to move beyond that. The flags issue is not going to be one that can be resolved by some you know, formula knocked out between parties. I'm Tim McGarry, and you're watching a very special film about something very important to the people of Northern Ireland. No, not health or education or the economy. Flags. Oh, we love a flag in Northern Ireland. John Hume famously said, you can't eat a flag. Well, some people here would love a flag they would have for dinner, breakfast and supper. Why is no lamppost in Northern Ireland safe from a flag? We asked some politicians to find out. Flags in Northern Ireland seem to be uh, something which affects the whole of the community. Um, and of course, one of the reasons is, given our history, that people do have, uh, first of all, this conflict of identity. Uh, we've been through 40 years when you had people trying to terrorise us into United Ireland, and obviously the flag of the Republic was important to them. And equally then, of course, for those who are being terrorised um, and wish to stay within the United Kingdom, the symbol of the United Kingdom was very important to them. Of course, I mean, we, we seem to get obsessed with flags in other ways as well. I mean, the, the story in Hollywood the other week there I thought was a class one, you know, where having a party to celebrate um, Rory's involvement in the, the uh, European team and uh, had to fly a flag and then the police thought it was some terrorist flag, <laughs> some Arab terrorist flag. So, you know, and, and you know, if you even look, we, we have Palestinian flags flying, we have Israeli flags flying, we have Canadian flags flying, with Scottish flags flying around the 12th as well. So, I mean, flags seem to be quite important to us, but I think that the reason why the, the, they have become um, maybe more important here than in other parts of the United Kingdom is because you know, we're one part of the United Kingdom where our destiny had been uncertain for so long and where unionists felt, look, we've got to have some symbol of our Britishness. And of course, Republicans wanted to have a symbol of their Irishness. Well, obviously there's a number of different flags. Uh, obviously you have the Union Jack that unionists, many unionists, uh, will look to as their flag. The Irish tricolour uh, reflects the identity of many people who see themselves here as Irish, including myself. So I, I think flags should be used sparingly. Uh, they should be used uh, on certain occasions uh, and they should be used respectfully. Uh, I do think we need to move away from a situation where it's either my flag or no, and nobody else's. Uh, I think that, the, I recognise that there are many people here who view themselves as British uh, and Northern Irish and wouldn't adhere to my, what I view uh, as my identity. And that's okay, you know, people have a right to have different identities. They have a right to express that through the use uh, of a flag. Uh, but I think in regard to the way flags are used here in general, um, there's too much abuse of flags in terms of lampposts, in terms of an over-proliferation of flags uh, in certain areas uh, and I think there needs to be more of a management because the more flags are used the more they are disrespected and abused and at the end of the day that is something that uh, people uh, and people from different political backgrounds here do not want to see. I think some people bind up their identity an awful lot in a flag and there are probably some people who see the flag of the Union flag or the old Northern Ireland government flag, which they call the Ulster flag, as a symbol of what they think they held 
on what they perhaps fear they've lost. What I think we've now got is a set of much more inclusive relationships since Good Friday 1998, which give the opportunity for everyone to express their identity. People shouldn't be frightened of that. If people wish to display an aspiration by flying a flag at particular times, that's very different from showing it almost as a symbol of either loss that they feel or an attempt to ram their culture down other people's throats. Unfortunately, we see that from both sides at different times. Um, I go to Scotland quite regularly and you'll see Union flags, you'll see the Cross of St Andrew and you will even see the Lion of the uh, Royal Standard of Scotland. Nobody's particularly bothered. Um, it's a bit like the old RUC cap badge, the harp, the crown, the shamrocks. It has all the ingredients that are necessary to represent the Irishness of that particular organisation within the British system of the administration of law, or the application of law. Indeed, it's not particularly widely known, but just after partition, a badge was produced um, to replace the Royal Irish Constabulary Badge. It was a cross of St George with a red hand in the middle of it and a crown on top of it. And it was rejected by the men of the Royal Men and Women, not be men in those days, the men of the Royal Constabulary as not being Irish enough. Well, the term flag uh, is, of course, uh, a satire on the Belfast pronunciation of flag. It's a jocose term. Uh, it's used by the Hold the Wall guy, Tim McGarry, comedians like that. And I, I suppose really it's an attempt uh, by people to cope with uh, the silliness uh, and the awkwardness and the embarrassment of our dispute uh, over f flags uh, here in Belfast and Northern Ireland generally. Um, and of course it's reflective of the black humour uh, which sustained Belfast people and others uh, throughout the course of the Troubles. Uh, it was that uh, black humour, that gallows humour that got us through many a dark patch. Um, but it, it does represent uh, a comment on the silliness of our dispute uh, and I suppose it's a worthwhile uh, intervention in comic terms to remind us, you know, that we shouldn't get wrapped up in such silly things as flags and we should, uh, in fact, be exploring something wider and uh, much more exciting than the introspection of uh, a dispute over flags. I think they represent the area, but uh, my honest opinion would be to, to take, like I've said earlier, take flags, take all flags down, and then there's going to be no, no problems around. Take every flag down. Um, well, I think uh, Union Jack obviously is the, the British um, element of uh, Northern Ireland, and then we have their um, Ulster flag as well. So um, I think that you know covers the you know sort of all divides of Northern Ireland with the representation of the Ulster flag and the, the meaning behind it. I come from a very segregated area of Northern Ireland and um, and the flags in my area would be the likes of um, the UVF, um, the IRA, the UDR, the so on and so forth, letters, letters, letters. I think it would be great if we could find a flag that symbolised this entire community that people could all respect and could be used in specific ways for Northern Ireland, just the same way as there's a, a Scottish saltire and yet the majority of Scots also see the Union flag as their flag. There's a Welsh dragon and also the Union flag. We have to respect the fact that there are different identities within Northern Ireland and some symbol which could unite us might perhaps be useful. I see myself as, as being Irish, as being a, an Ulster man and also being from Antrim. Um, because there, there's a county identity, I don't know if that's something that is unique to people who follow Gaelic games uh, 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 in comparison to other sports, uh, but certainly that there's a strong sense of identity for me in, in those three areas. 
in terms of a flag uh, to represent the, the north of the six counties or, or Northern Ireland to which you refer, um, that is something that probably would be mainly uh, supported uh, of, of people from a unionist background. I'm not so sure that a Northern Irish flag would actually sort the problem out because for the people for whom the flag matters most, it's a particular flag which matters to them. Um, so if you're a Republican, you want the expression of your Republicanism, i.e. the um, identification with the Irish Republic. And if you're a Unionist, you want the expression of your Unionism, i.e. the flag of the United Kingdom. Mm, we in Northern Ireland have the nationalist Ulster flag. We have what is inappropriately called the Ulster flag and we have the Union flag. To me, to symbolise the unity of the United Kingdom of which we are constitutionally a part as a result of a democratic process and an agreement. The tricolour is an attempt to unify people, uh, but I understand that unionists object to it and don't see it in those terms. They see it as uh, something threatening and, and something that um, uh, they are ant antipathetic towards. Um, the, and correspondingly, I suppose, unionists could argue, well, you know, the union flag is a combination of uh, the uh, cross of St. Patrick and uh, St. George and Scotland and so forth, and uh, that it is the unity of the United Kingdom, uh, something which uh, I, I can understand but do not empathise with. I feel that the two main identities here are Irish uh, and those who see themselves uh, as British and I think rather than trying to um, create a new, a new flag, another flag uh, and to create a new sense of identity, I, I think we need to learn to be uh, understanding and respectful of people's identities as they are so rather than trying to steer people into a different category, we need to learn to respect uh, people's identities as they exist because that is part of the problem here. Oh yeah, if you've got to have a flag to flat a football match or a flag to flat a rugby match or what some sporting event or on some special day, yeah, let's have a Northern, Northern Irish one. But that would not, I don't believe, sort out the, 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 the central divisive issue that there is with the flag amongst those who feel that either their identity is under threat or who wish to push a different identity down the throats of, of others. If we are to have an alternative uh, to the uh, tricolour and the Union flag, then I would choose the European flag because I think that the European ideal and European unity is something that is very, very important to Ireland in particular, but to these islands uh, in common, uh, Britain and Ireland. In the Assembly, we've never really formally adopted the flax flowers, but we've sort of accepted it on trial about 16 years ago and it's evolved. Maybe that's the only way we would get some kind of response, not to ask people to formally agree it, but just see something of that sort of neutral symbolism which can unite all of Northern Ireland rather than dividing people by their, their constitutional aspirations. We just need to see that being used gradually and I think that would be something that would be beneficial for all of us. So, what have we learnt? Well, this is Northern Ireland. We've learnt nothing and we never will. Should there be a Northern Ireland flag? I like the idea of a Northern Ireland flag. You know, I have a couple of ideas. Instead of Olympic rings, just burning tyres or two golf clubs crossed with the faces of Rory McIlroy and Graham McDowell. Or how about just a, a plain piece of white cloth and the words, our flag, written on it. We'll probably always be fighting about flags. On the plus side, these comedians will always be in work. <laughs>